All right. All right. All right. In this video, we're going to be talking about L'Hopital's rule. So the idea of L'Hopital's rule is if you've got a limit um, that you can't figure out, then you can find the derivative of the top, derivative of the bottom, and then that's going to be the same limit. Um, however, you got to be careful about L'Hopital's rule. It only works if you have zero over zero. If you have infinity over infinity, when you check do what's going on with your limit, you want to double check to make sure that the left and right limits are matching up and take a look at information about that. Also, if you get some of these, you want to try to work to get it into this form and do some manipulating with the problem so that they can be infinity over infinity or zero over zero. So in this example, if we plug in a zero into our denominator, we get zero. And if we plug in zero for sine, the sine of zero is zero. Um, uh, so we've got a good L'Hopital's rule. We can't figure out the limit like ourselves, but if we take a look at the graph, we can see, hey, that thing's heading up towards five. So there's five right there. So hopefully we should get five when we check that limit using L'Hopital's rule. So this would equal uh, the limit as x approaches 0 of the derivative of our top. So the derivative of the top is going to be the cosine. The derivative of sine is cosine, right? Yeah, it's late at night, and I can't remember. <laughs> sine is cosine. <laughs> yep, yeah, it sure is. Derivative of sine is cosine. Uh, of 5x, and then we've got a chain rule that derivative of the inside is 5. In the denominator, we find the derivative of that x, and it's just a 1. Okay, now when we plug in that 0, we get the cosine of 5 times 0 times 5 over, well, I'm not even going to write the over 1 because that's silly. Uh, the cosine of 0 is 1 times 5. Oh, we get 5, which matches up with what we saw on our graph. So great. Ha <laughs> ha. L'Hopital success. In this example, we might need to use L'Hopital's rule more than once. That's what it means by that stronger form, is that the first derivative still doesn't get things to work out for us. So we go here and we try to plug in 0. We get the cosine of 0 minus 1 over e to the 0 minus 0 minus 1. So the cosine of 0 is 1. So we got 1 minus 1, which is 0. And then in the denominator, we got 1 minus 1. That's also 0. So we are good to apply L'Hopital's rule. We do want to do that check first. So we do the limit as t approaches 0. Derivative of our top, the derivative of cosine is uh, negative sine of t minus 1. Over, uh, we do the derivative of e to the t. That's still e to the t. Um, the derivative of t is 1. And then the derivative of 1 is 0. I don't know why I wrote this minus 1. Just, just ignore that. You don't, don't, don't you worry none about that. Okay, um, let's see if that worked. Uh, do we have the thing we wanted? Uh, if I can write anything, maybe. So we do the derivative of sine. Oh, derivative of sine. Plug in your zero and see if it works. Um, so we get e to the zero minus one. The sine of zero is zero, and e to the zero is one minus one. Oh, we still have zero over zero, so we still haven't found the limit but we still are in good L'Hopital shape. So just do the derivative again. All right, so all right, so then that's going to still be the limit as t approaches 0. We find the derivative of sine. The derivative of sine is cosine. We're going to keep that negative now, so cosine of t. e to the t derivative of that is still going to be e to the t, but now that 1, ew, that's a gross t, but now that 1, uh, the derivative of negative 1 is just 0. Okay, third time's the charm, maybe? Let's find out. So we get negative cosine of 0 over e to the 0 
cosine of zero is one over one. Ah, oh, yeah. So our limit ends up being one. Hooray! In this problem, we are trying to figure out what indeterminate form we got and see what happens. So when we plug in our infinity, we get infinity times the tangent of one over infinity. So when we put infinity in that denominator, we can't actually do that, but if we imagine that we have some huge number there, that's really talking about like the tangent of zero. So this is, inf when we get a big number there, we get zero. So tan zero. And the tangent of zero is just zero, so we have infinity multiplied by zero. So uh, this is not zero over zero, so we're not allowed to apply L'Hopital's rule. Plus, we don't even have a fraction. So we want to do that. Um, let's try to make a fraction. So I don't really like that there's stuff going on inside of that tangent. So let's let W equal that 1 over X. Um, just so we can get rid of that uh, W, or that whatever, is inside a tangent. So then from that idea, you can also say that X equals 1 over W. Oh, maybe you can see where I'm going with this. But then let's also think about that limit. So the limit as x approaches infinity for, for that w, so of that 1 over x, as x approaches infinity, w, that 1 over x, is going to head towards 0. So we want to readjust this limit so that instead of infinity, W is going to be heading towards zero because as X heads towards infinity, we get one over infinity. So as X heads towards infinity, W heads towards zero because W is representing that one over X. So now we've got the limit as X approaches, no, not X, as W approaches infin zero as a pro w approaches zero <laughs> and then we're going to place that one over x this one over x right here with a one over w because then we'll have a fraction and then we've got our tangent and then inside of that tangent we're just going to have a w so now maybe we'll be looking much better for L'Hopital's rule. Let's find out. So all I've done is I've just kind of like swapped out some things in order to try to rearrange that so we can get that zero over zero. I'm just rearranging the look of this problem. So if we evaluate this limit, that we get the tangent of zero over zero, and we just and we discussed at the start of this problem that the tangent of zero is zero. So okay, so we're set now to do L'Hopital's rule. So we do the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. So the limit as w approaches 0. The derivative of tangent is secant squared over the derivative of w is just 1. So secant squared is, if we plug in a 0 there, so that's secant squared of 0. Uh, cosine of 0 is 1. So 1 over 1 squared is just going to be 1. So our limit as x tan of 1 over x is going to be 1. Woof!